Hey guys, it's Cooley Smiley, and it is 2022. What? What? <laughs> okay, chill. So that means it's January, which means if you know how months work, we just finished December. And you know what that means? It's time for another favorites video. Let's talk about my favorite things from December. I'm gonna start off this video by saying that December was a very up and down, roller coastery month for me but still so good. And I think I'm always gonna look back on this past December as an eye-opening month, very fulfilling month. First thing on my list, I went to my first show since the pandemic has happened. First and only show and probably my last for a while. I saw Sizzy Rocket, who is an artist I discovered because of some of you guys introducing me to her music. And so I've been obsessing with her over this whole pandemic. And one of my very best friends here in Austin set up a show herself to have Sizzy come play here. So obviously I had to support my bestie and I had to support Sizzy and I went to a show and it was wild. It's a wild experience being in a concert setting after so many years of not being able to do it. Obviously Omnicron is its whole other beast and things are ramping back up again. And part of me regrets going to that concert, but at the same time, it was such a great night. I had such a great experience. I don't wanna forget the happiness I felt and the gratitude I felt being in the same room as one of my new favorite artists and supporting one of my best friends doing something that meant a lot to her. Setting up a, a venue and a, a show and a night because it wasn't just Sizzy playing, there was opening acts, there was burlesque. It was a gay old time. And I mean that in a very homosexual sense. <laughs> it was great. <laughs> also, I looked hot, so. It's nice to just like find reasons to look hot. Speaking of finding reasons to look hot, the next thing on my list is thrifting and supporting small businesses. This is something I did before the pandemic a lot, but because of the pandemic, obviously I wasn't going to stores, I wasn't shopping, but with things the way that they were at the beginning of the month, I felt safe to do so. Obviously, once again, there were regrets. Uh, and we live and we learn. But finding thrift stores and small businesses that aren't super crowded has been really fulfilling for me in a few ways. Over the pandemic, I found shopping in fast fashion, not fully understanding the damage I was doing on a lot of different realms of the world. It's not good for the environment. It's not kind to its workers. It's wasteful, etc. Once I opened my eyes to that, I've decided now to work hard to reverse what I did to the world when I was shopping fast fashion, if that makes sense. So I've been finding thrift stores around Austin and small businesses around Austin that are clothing, handmade, art, etc. from a little flea market that was happening in downtown Austin put together by a bunch of strong independent women. And I found some really cool pieces and I kind of want to film a thrift store haul for you guys. If you guys are interested in that, let me know in the comment section below and I will show you some of my favorite thrifted pieces that I've gotten since I've started thrifting again. Okay, next thing on my list is something very simple. It's short and sweet. The Belvita gingerbread biscuits. Where have they been all my life? Back in high school, I used to eat the Belvita biscuits every morning before school. They're like fulfilling and nutritious and delicious and that rhymed and I'm aware of it. But during December, they had a gingerbread version out and I bought three boxes and they're all almost gone. So. I think I liked them, I don't know. And while we're on the theme of food, I recently was introduced to a new sushi restaurant here in Austin by my friend Cat Scratch, who you've seen in a few vlogs in the past, and her husband. They introduced me to this super cool restaurant that has conveyor belt sushi and it's affordable and it's delicious. This isn't just on my favorites list because I like the restaurant. This is on my favorites list because even before the pandemic, I could never eat in restaurants by myself. That was just like a social anxiety thing, but I wanted to at least try this year to go out and sit and eat at a restaurant by myself without having to have like headphones in my ears or be distracted by things. I wanted to just be able to enjoy a meal on my own. And let me tell y'all, after thrifting and going to that flea market that one day, I decided to go to the sushi restaurant by myself 
They have areas where you can sit as a single person facing the conveyor belt so you're not like sitting at a huge table by yourself and feeling wasteful of space. And the sushi's just delicious. It was a great experience. It was low interaction even from waiters and waitresses, which is a big anxiety for me. And I think I found my new favorite spot to eat by myself. This is just a big achievement for me in general. I'm really proud of myself. And I had a great time. Now, obviously, I'm a pro jammer, so I have to talk about video games. So the next thing on my list is a little game that some of you guys know I'm a big fan of, but I try to keep it on the down low because people love to spoil stuff about these games. However, in the month of December, I finally beat Danganronpa 2, and I am... I loved it. I loved it. There were things that I was starting to predict ahead of time, and I was... I was just feeling so like sure of myself and I, I yes siree, your girl, she knew it. Anyways, all the Danganronpa games came out on the Switch this past month. They used to just be on PC. I'm like 90% sure maybe they were on Xbox too, but you couldn't play them on the Switch. And this is a game that is mostly reading. So I would get so sick and tired of sitting at my computer like this, like at 5 a.m. because this game's addictive and you'll play it all night. And so it made it really hard for me to beat Danganronpa 2, even though I love it. So when it came out on the Switch, I bought it and I started over and pretty much every night after stream, I would lay in bed for a few hours and play. It's been really nice to A, have a game that I play off stream and B, to finally beat a game that I've been obsessing over since the beginning of the pandemic. <laughs> and by the way, if you like anime, if you like murder mysteries, if you like gore and dark things, you might like Danganronpa. Consider playing it. Honestly, if you guys weren't expecting to hear me talk about this game during my December favorites, you haven't been watching my streams, and that's very clear to me. And we're fighting. Um, no, I'm just kidding. I know that live streams aren't for everybody, but my live streams have mainly consisted of Mario Party superstars in the month of December. For those of you who don't know, Mario Party 3 was the first video game I ever played. First video game I ever touched. I picked up an N64 controller with my brother and his friends in the basement, the unfinished basement of my house in Nebraska, and played my first video game. And ever since, I've been hooked. I, of course, did end up playing Mario Party 1 and 2 eventually after that, but 3 was the first game I ever played. And for years, it has killed me that the Mario Party games were just getting worse and worse and worse and just deteriorating. They didn't have the old feel of the original games, the board game feel. They had all these new extra elements that were just too complicated and too much and frustrating and annoying. And they just weren't, they weren't, they weren't the OG. So Mario Party Superstars did exactly what I've been wanting them to do for years. They brought back old maps. They brought back old mini games and they just went back to the classics basically remastered and put them all together. And it's the best thing in the whole world. Christmas Eve, you guys, if you watch my vlogs from Christmas, you know this, but we literally played nine hours straight of Mario Party on Christmas Eve. How's everybody doing tonight? You guys having good? Uh, you, guys <laughs> 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 you guys having good? <laughs> Not me. Not Hermione. Not Hermione. You. You. Yeah. <laughs> try so hard and go so and far. And come so far. No, you don't come far. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you don't come far, Bessie. <laughs> anyway, if you have people to play the Switch with, you need to buy it. Just buy it. You won't regret it. Let me know in the comment section below what character you main as. Okay, so the next thing on my list has to do with the fact that I got COVID in December. Never thought I'd say that, but I did have COVID, possibly Omicron. However, I think they're saying that people who are getting Omicron are not losing their taste and their smell, and I did. This favorites thing has to do with that because four of the days that I was showing symptoms of COVID, I lost my, my taste and my smell. There were moments during those four days where all I could taste in my mouth 
was literal sewage. It just tasted like garbage in my mouth. And I don't know how to explain it. It's just, it was just so terrible and it's distracting. And then when it's in your mouth and there's no ability to smell and be distracted by smells, it's all you can concentrate on. But I had one thing, one single thing that saved me briefly during that time. And it was this right here, Mentos Pure Fresh Gum. Now I have this in two different flavors. But this is the only flavor that somehow struck through my barrier of not being able to taste and smell. Something about this like super extra mintiness of this cut through whatever was blocking and making everything taste like sewage. No other gum worked. No other foods worked. Nothing worked but this. And that brings me to my next thing on my list. The next favorite thing for me, not just in December, but in general, is smelling and tasting. I really take that shit for granted. And I I don't plan on doing that much more in the future. And I don't know, maybe you guys have been looking at this flannel that I've been wearing this whole video and thinking, oh, coolie, where the heck did you get that? Well, that leads me to the next thing on my list. Have you guys ever heard of a little company that's just, you know, kind of starting up and being cute? And like, they're just like new and up and coming called Rooster Teeth. What about Fun House or uh, Achievement Hunters? While I was sick with COVID, Rooster Teeth sent me a bunch of really cute clothes, including this flannel. And here are some more pictures of stuff that they sent me. I've bought some of uh, the clothes from Barbara's clothing line through Rooster Teeth because I love their fashion sense. I love what they do with their merch and how they make it not even look like merch. And I was so honored to find out that they sent me clothes this December. So if you see me wearing a bunch of Rooster Teeth clothes, clothing. That's why it's cute as hell. This is probably my new favorite flannel. Thank you so much, Rooster Teeth. And last thing on my list is kind of a milestone, a healing journey milestone. The night of New Year's, I was on the phone with a friend. I was explaining to them how far I've come and trying to prove to them that they can do it too, in a sense. And in that moment, I said, you know, I used to really hate myself. I don't feel that way anymore. I, I don't hate myself. And in that moment, I realized that for a while now, that's been my truth. I don't hate myself anymore. I understand that I'm doing my best and I make mistakes because I'm human. What's to hate about that, you know? There are moments where I make mistakes. There are things that I do that I don't love. There are moments where I can be, dare I say, cringy. And if you had told me two years ago that one day I would learn to not hate myself, I mean, people did tell me that. And I did not believe them. So I guess the reason I want to put this at the end of this video is because I want you guys to know that if you feel hatred towards yourself, if you feel like you're never going to feel good about yourself, I want you to know that I felt that way too, but I've put in work and it's been hard, but it's been worth it. And I'm rooting for you. I want you to love yourself. I want that for you so bad. And I'm just proud of myself and grateful and happy. What a great way to start 2022. Anyway, that's my favorite list from December of 2000. 21. <laughs> That's wild. Let me know some of the favorite things that happened to you in December. Leave a like. If you enjoy these videos, please like them and subscribe. Hit that bell button if you haven't already so you can get notified when I have new videos going live. And yeah, I'll see you guys on the YouTubes later. Let's learn to love ourselves together, friends. Mwah. Thank you.